Yeah, there's um, <laughs> it's, that kind, it's that it's that kind of day that I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and shut my eyes right on after this. Um, mm-hmm. this yeah, Mercury show. is at is cutting it's the acting. fuck up. Okay, with her drunk ass, she is acting a goddamn fool. I can't take it. I cannot <laughs> take it. And to think we have what. Two more weeks, at least a week, or at least a yeah. week or so. A week and a half, yeah. Listen, and then you still got the whatever happened. And then the shadow the period. Time. Yeah, the after shadow. fucking shadow ass. Oh, I can't. The shadow. I, I I usually am chill during the shadow. It's the pre, it's the pre and then during that I usually find is difficult. It's but it's a mess. This one was a short one though. I'm glad it about is. that. This one was short because. I, I know usually the second one of the year lasts for like a month or so. Like it's, it does. She'd be real drunk and slow and in, in that second go around. So Word. Well, yeah. I'm going to just go ahead and start because I don't know where Pablo is. But hey, guys, welcome yeah. to episode 10. 10. Y'all. Yes. <laughs> 10. Of the Ask Arena Live After Show. I am your host, Janine Truitt, Chief Innovations Officer for Talent Think Innovations LLC, based here in New York. And I focus on workforce planning, digital transformation projects, and tech advisory, just to name a few things. If you're ever interested in what I do at scale, you can visit me at www.talentthinkinnovations.com. And I'm gonna pass the mic to my girl Sarah. Oh, hello, you. hello, everyone. I think it's the doctor. There hello, hello, everyone. I am Sarah Morgan. I am the Chief Excellence Officer for Buzzaroni LLC, a coaching and consulting company based out of Raleigh, North Carolina. You can follow me at the Buzz on HR on all social media. And I'm Dr. Paul Hill, and I'm just on time, apparently. So, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> but wait, why he came in mad chipper though? You know, we so, out here. Hey, so, I know. Oh, so early, I was like, oh, I caught him. I'm excited. Cool. Um, Dr. Paul McNeil, uh, the founder of MB Usable Security. Uh, we deal with all things marketing and cybersecurity analytics. Uh, that's that's my uh, pitch for today. Hi. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was going to catch it. I'm excited. Uh-huh. We're excited that he you're is here. excited. We're excited. We are. We are. We weren't sure you were going to show thing. up tonight. We I told you I was coming. Are you prepared? Do you have your, you know, stay in Ready. your lane stuff, or are you going to be a big boy, nah, a nah, grown nah, man, nah. and have the discussion? Did it, wow. I'm always a grown man. Oh, oh, oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah. I love it. I love it. Oh, yeah. it's so disrespectful. <laughs> you know, it's all love. I I have to get with you, you know, because I, I wait, no Talenti? And he's got like one light, one ethereal light. Yeah. I got I got a couple of lights going oh, on up here. Too. Wow. I don't know. That's a couple of lights. That's special. You know, I'm trying to. Sh- I'm shooting some video contests. I've been changing up the lighting game for the camera. Proud of you. It's very ethereal. Yeah. Very ethereal. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna hide in the shadows at the end. And you guys start talking crazy. So you weren't on the show show. So no. I'll bring you up to date as to what we were talking about. So essentially. Um, there is a rule or a, a binding rule that is on the table currently in Washington around reproductive rights that basically says that any clinic or healthcare organization that receives public funds for family planning services um, would no longer be able to give full and accurate information to their patrons around reproductive health. What do you mean full and accurate? Why would they not? It's a, I don't get it. And therein lies the problem. And therein lies the issue. So what, so, are they, what are they talking about being as full? So 
that le I mean that they use that language leaves it wide open for there to be all sorts of inaccuracies and equities, you know, all the ends, right? Yeah. But so like for an example, how it could play out is and this has to do with contraception as well. So for instance, if I were an adolescent and say I didn't want my parents to really be in my business, but I I know I'm gonna be sexually active. And so I walk into a Planned Parenthood. In the past, Planned Parenthood would have counseled me on the full range of options I had available to me. If this provision goes through, they basically just say, well, we've got IUDs and we've got five different types of birth control and you let us know what you want. With no counseling as to like, this one would be better because of this reason or because your health history indicates this, I would rather see you go right. right. So that's where that full and not completely accurate thing comes in. So what do y'all think about this? Trash. I don't know, it sounds dumb. Trash. Yeah, I think it's utter trash. Don't understand why we are so obsessed with controlling women's uteruses and what goes on inside them. I don't understand. Like I, like, I just don't understand this obsession with what women are choosing to do with their reproductive organs. I just, I don't, I do not understand the obsession with it. And it was interesting this week, because I don't know if you guys saw the article um, about the legislation in Georgia where there was a group who proposed that men, you know, again, if we, if we control and reproductive health and we all, you know, pro-life now, then um, no more Viagra, no more vasectomy. And people went off, okay? Like men were like, what do you mean no Viagra, no vasectomy? So it's just interesting to me how when the tables turn and, you know, suddenly y'all's rights start to get infringed upon, men's rights start to get infringed upon, then suddenly, you know, people are ready to riot in the street. But we are, women are still, we still get treated like we can't, we, we don't have the capacity to make decisions for ourselves as to what should go on with our uteruses. I just, I don't understand this obsession with controlling women in general, but in particular controlling our rights to have or not have and when to have and under what circumstances to have children. I just, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, I swear. Really? I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. I don't know. It's weird. Like the whole situation is weird. No, it like, is. So, right. I mean, it's just in. I don't know. I just feel like in light of everything, like it's just a really weird thing and a weird time to bring it. Like it's, uh, it's weird. I don't. No comments. I don't know. <laughs> I just. I, I guess I always just find it like interesting. Like in the scheme of all the the great and many issues we have in this country that and like all the bills all the rules that you could be creating and bringing you know to the table to be passed that this is the one this is yeah. the one that somebody said no we're gonna have a debate and a dialogue and we're gonna bring this to fruition because this is a mat this is a serious matter that has to be handled like yesterday not that we need to impeach the asshole of a president we've got um, not that we need to get rid of like corruption at all levels of our government. None of that. We're going to just worry about like not advising adolescents who are already reckless about their options in, in the proper way, because that isn't. Yeah, because. Go ahead. If yeah. We stop, yeah, if, because if we stop advising them, then somehow that means that they're going to stop having sex and stop procreating as teens. And that has never worked in the history of ever. So like, it's just like what we talked about last week, like 
these masculine ways like maybe we ought to try like maybe you you ought to just get up out of women's uteruses and it might work out better because all of these attempts at controlling it haven't been successful we're still let you tell it those who, who advocate for this stuff we're no further along so maybe if you just get the fuck out of the way um things will find a way to work themselves out. I don't know. Like, I, how about we give that, okay, give that a try. I just, I just, I don't, I don't, I do not understand this obsession with the uterus. I just, I don't. Mm-mm. But it, you know, and then it's like, so I'm going to come to your clinic. Like, let's just say hypothetically, I'm pregnant. I'm, I'm, I didn't expect to get pregnant. Right. And I'm mortified. And I don't have the answers. Like, I I don't have the answers. And perhaps I need you to kind of guide me, walk me through the options because I've just lost all of my sensibilities. And so you're not going to tell me what the risks are in getting an abortion. Um, And so, and you're not, you're not going to tell me also what I'm going to stand to feel if I offer this child up for adoption and go full term. Um, And moreover, you're not going to look at my health history to see if there are any contraindications. So what, what, where are we going with this? Sounds legit. Sounds like, sounds like a advanced medical community right there that is built on making sure that its citizens have, adequate comprehensive education and health care i mean that's what that sounds like to me clearly because america <laughs> it's just it's so <laughs> preposterous it's just so preposterous but i think you know it points to a larger need for um you know for parents to like parents as parents we have to like get over ourselves and the the discomfort that comes along with having those kinds of conversations with kids. Um, I I was fortunate that I went to a high school and it was a Catholic high school in um, Newark, New Jersey. Shout out to St. Vincent Academy in Newark, New Jersey. Um, But we had, you know, even though we were a Catholic all girls high school, the school was super open with us about sexual education and we started that as freshmen so we were ninth graders taking comprehensive health classes about sexually transmitted diseases and exactly how our bodies work we watch birthing videos like if that's not enough to scare some teenage girls straight um I don't know what is so but they were very open and honest with us about like what goes on like photographs of what your what your areas is going to look like should you catch certain kinds of diseases and you know yeah so and we talked and we also talked about you know the 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 spectrum of domestic violence and and dating violence and those sorts of things like they were just so open with us and I was grateful for that because it created a catalyst for me to have conversations with my mom that I don't think I would have come to on my own. And now I try to, you know, my daughter is is a tween. She's 11, about to be 12. And I'm starting to, you know, kind of create moments for her to have those kinds of conversations and for her to ask questions about what's going on with her body and what's going to be going on with her body. And the same thing for my sons. I just think, we've got to, you know, point to the fact that we've got to take more control of our own children and the children under our influence because, you know, some people's parents aren't going to do it. You just got to be a safe space for the kids because they're going to keep trying to roll back the clock on our ability to get educated about our bodies. Um, So, and I would encourage men to do the same. You got to, you, you know, before you start shooting, you know, you know, you gotta know what's happening. So, yeah. no, it's. I mean, that's accurate. I'm. I'm in the same position. I mean, Eleni, she's she's right on that tween spectrum. But to be, if I'm honest, the conversations about sex have been happening since third grade. 
um, which I had not been prepared for because, I mean, in third grade, I was, I was worried about my gem doll and my, my, my Barbie doll and my rainbow bright shit. I couldn't, I like, that was not anywhere in any conversation anywhere. I think it was enough to just have kissed a boy. And that was like, woo. So it was like, no. So it, it was really like, wait, I thought I had more time for this conversation when third grade wow. happened. And, you know, it was already happening. And, and so I was just like, okay here we go, you know, and so it's just been rolling since then, that conversation, and, you know, you're going to get your period, and all that stuff, we're having that discussion now, like, you, it's going to happen, you know, <laughs> like, just like, oh, I don't want to have it, no, you're going to have it, and nobody wants to have right, it, right, nobody <laughs> really wanted nobody this, wants ask for this, honey, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to happen, and we're going to prepare for it, you know, which I think is different than when you and I were, you know, younger. It was like a specific mm -hmm. stage that you started talking about it and in a certain way. But I'm just like, you know, this is what it is. And I'll continue having those conversations with her so that, you know, she knows what's going on with her body. She's not afraid of it. She's not ashamed of it, you know, like all those things um, so that she doesn't have to go out in this world and, and be beholden to these idiots that will tell her that all this shit is damnation, you know, <laughs> like it's just nonsense. Um, but yeah, Paul, I don't know. Were you going to say something? I'm just listening. I'm, here <laughs> learning. I'm, here learning. I'm observing and learning. <laughs> I'm just listening because I mean I don't have I don't have to deal with most of the stuff you know um, uh, yeah yeah I mean I don't have any kids uh, I don't have a uterus you know so good eh. to know I didn't realize you know, you know hey heads up you know. these days so. heads up hey uh, cis male over here um I uh, <laughs> but I no I mean because for me. My parents, I grew up very, very conservative, and I grew up very uh, sheltered. So, well, eh, my parents tried to be sheltering, but like for me, it was like my dad was very big on reading and stuff. So I never really had a talk per se. I just like read a lot of books, and that was it. Like he would go to the library, like read books. So it wasn't like a conversation I had with my parents. It was like, oh, I wonder how this works. So when we go to the library, I would pick up all these like purity books. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess that's what you're reading now, right? It wasn't like a big deal. And then if I had a question or two, I might talk to him about it, but it was always based around like reading. So it never was like a thing. And then also I grew up in some really rural places where, you know, it's not a lot to do. So people start fooling around very early on. So like, I remember my friend, I was like 12, when my friend first friend had an abortion and I was 12 when my first friend had a kid. So, you know, it was a lot of like going on, like what the friend who had an abortion, her parents made her have one because she told them that uh, this older guy raped her, but she actually made the guy think she was 16. And uh, it was like a whole thing. So like I dealt with those situations as an outsider and it, and so for me, that was where my like, oh, I gotta be careful out here. People get set up for crazy stuff. Oh, I'm out. Uh, this is I'm cool on. I'm cool on this whole thing. So it was a very different situation. So to think to start thinking of it from uh, how do I train my kids, situation stuff like that. Like I don't, I wouldn't know how to how that would even start. Mm. Yeah, it's so it's interesting you bring up the the difference between, you know, rural versus, I guess, a more metro upbringing. Okay. So I've never lived in a rural setting, New York born and bred. However, um, one of my cousins had been brought up, she was like an army brat. And so, you know, they moved around about the South. And I remember when we finally met her and her sister, and like, you know, we were like tweens. So, you know, that 11, 12, whatever mm -hmm. age range. And I thought like people in my peer group were so advanced. But then I talked to her about like what they get into. 
And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what, what, like, where are your parents when this shit is going on? And I mean, this was coming from a New York girl. <laughs> like, I was the yeah. kid that, like, you know, I, I lived in Long Island, but most of my family lived in the city, Queens and Brooklyn. So, you know, I, I was spending time out there and kind of coming into my own in that ecosystem. So I thought I, you know, I knew my shit when I met her and she's telling me some of the shit they were into at like 11 and 12. I mean, they were like 12 and dating guys that were like 17. 17, 18, 19. 18, yeah. 19. And I was just like, They, they meet you at the bus. And then. And they got cars, so now they don't want to mess with you. And then as a little boy, you're just like, boo, these something's wrong with these guys. Why do they have a car and they have to come to the school bus? You know what I mean? Like, like something's wrong here. Oh, you're a hater. Nah, I'm pretty sure that if this dude was a you can at least pull a 16-year-old, because you're not that awesome. Like, <laughs> right. um, those are real conversations that I used to have. But anyway, um, no, I mean, I agree. I think because when we moved to the South, I was 11. And I, my brother might have been eight. And I remember the first like set of people we met, maybe like we were down there for like a month. And they were like, oh, to my brother who was like eight, like, oh, you have a little girlfriend? And I was like, what? No. Yeah, exactly. He made the same face. Why don't you have a girlfriend? This is an adult asking him this at, at our church at the time. And he was like, why do you have a girlfriend? He's like, because I'm eight. <laughs> that's what was his response. She was like, she was like, eight? That's old enough. You should have had a girlfriend from last year. But that's that marriage culture. So it starts early because of the same, on the same token, you get married at like 22, 21, 19. You know, if you're not married, like I know people who are living together by the time they turn 19 already had like six months under their belts living together and then they'll ride out They'll have like two, three kids and then they'll hit 20, 25, 26. They got like nine, 10 years in their relationship and then they're like, well, I don't know if I want to still be married to this person anymore. But now they have like three under the age of seven, you know, like, so that's a different kind of thing. Whereas in New York, my cousins who are there, like, my uh my cousin's like 30 31 and you say marriage like man you just cursed at her like what are you doing this trying to get my little condo together over there in uh in brooklyn you're a while now like, okay do your thing but you know it's just it's a different it's a different vibe i've noticed like south southern and i think because i've bounced back and forth between you know you get to see all of it but as far as reproductive stuff is happening again I just was like, I don't want no kids. So I was a whore. I actually am very well versed in a lot of things because I never wanted to be like in a situation where I was trapped or set up or something like that. So I would just do a lot of like ask questions, sit in conversations like this and not say nothing and just listen. So, you know, because I have a very big family and I have a lot of cousins who also have set up in different things. I have one cousin. Uh, <laughs> I guess the condom broke. Uh, no, it wasn't my cousin, it was my friend. The condom broke and got the plan B, but the girl made herself regurgitate it after she took it and he left and she still was pregnant. Oh. Wow. Right, what part of the game is that? This is not what part of the game is that? Yeah. Why are we living this kind of life? <laughs> wow. Like, it's situations out here that are crazy. So, you know, well, I think that kind people of have a like, hard time. I just think people have a hard time talking about in relationships in general, talking about what they want and what they don't want and fair. when and coming to like agreements about that. And that whether that be whether you want, you know, whether this relationship is exclusive, whether I want to get married, when I want to get married, when I want to have children, how many children I want to have. Like, mm -hmm. people just have a very difficult time articulating that and then keeping, like, appropriate boundaries as far as that goes. You know, if you are somebody and you don't want children, then you have, you have to be taking the steps to make sure that that doesn't happen yeah. and not relying on the other um, individual. And on the young lady that. to keep it, keep it together. Yeah. That's real. I, yeah, I mean, so, I agree. Um, 
Yeah, I just think that that, I think in general, people get into relationships and they just have a very difficult time communicating about expectations and desires on so many levels and it plays itself out and yeah you unplanned and in some cases unwanted pregnancies end up in the mix of that um and then you have really difficult decisions to make or you end up tied to a person for the rest of your life that you didn't want to be tied to or you end up in a situation where you have kids that you have no relationship with and that and and you damage a whole human Human being in the process yeah so you know that's that's the tough piece and I just think the more open that people become to communicating honestly about what it is that they want at that time and what it is they think that they want in the future from a relationship, the quicker that that we get better at doing that, the less likely that people are going to end up, you know, in really messed up situations, like like the ones you just described. That's crazy. Yeah, I I think, too, um, it's accepting of people's truth. We don't do a good job of that, like just cross spectrum, but especially in this space, because um, like in that situation, for instance, it wasn't really everyone knew what their relationship was you know what i mean and even down to that particular situation in terms of um uh use of protection and the protection broke and then hey let's go do the backup clearly someone wasn't okay with accepting what was going on and did the opposite and so um i think that 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 makes it where you know, I mean, and, and that's been going on forever. You have people who do the poking holes, things of that nature. And that's why I said I've always been a proponent of everybody protecting their own neck, like guarding their own neck. You know what I mean? Um, so when you were mentioning like everyone being concerned with the uterus and stuff, I'm like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Because in my mind, I'm growing up with stories like this with dudes who have been caught super slipping. So for me, it was like, hey, everybody needs to take care of themselves anyway. But then you see, like, okay, we're going to restrict your ability to be informed enough to protect yourself. And that seems kind of crazy to me. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we're going to put you out here in this war zone, but you're not allowed to know that this type of bulletproof mess doesn't work against the bullets in your neighborhood. All right, be safe. Like, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. So. And again, particularly when, like I said, there's been several reports about how STDs are on the rise again, like ones Mm -hmm. that we haven't really had, you know, in the forefront in a while, your gonorrhea is the ugly ones, the not so cute ones, not that any of them are cute, but you know, the ugliest of ugly. And so now we're going to actually limit the education as well as the options of how they can kind of mitigate those situations. Like it. It's scary because I think at this stage in history with information as rampant as it is and things of that nature, what happens is a lot of people are seeing, a lot of people see sex earlier and earlier on than they did in the past. And they see lots of it because it's not only just movies and stuff, but porn is not hard to get access. Like it's long gone are the days that you've got to like jiggle the right button and hold the wire and hope that you see the fuzz you know what i mean like you... wait you really are kind of old though <laughs> <laughs> like you know what i mean like is you don't have those you don't have those days anymore you know what i mean and it's not even to the point where it was like oh man i can't stay on this website because the dial up is so like they'll, I'll get caught while it's like halfway. I don't want, you know, so things are on their phone, they're everywhere. So what happens now is there's like an oversimplification of reproduction and of sex and what it means. And so you go, okay, this is the thing I just saw on porn YouTube, you know, and I guess I'm going to go try this now. Or, oh, this girl is looking at XYZ. Because the stuff that kids are trying to get into, that's not new, right? Everyone goes through changes. We all go through puberty. We all have these different thoughts. But these, like my generation after and everything, 
we're not only having those feelings, we have easy access to see what to do to alleviate those things. Hmm. Like you don't have to try, it's there. And so now you're seeing, and you see a lot of porn and stuff, is not protection being used in there. So now if I'm going out and porn is my education, it's my sex ed because my parents are too shy to talk about it or my parents are waiting until I hit a certain age because they don't know that we're already having kids getting uh, hustle, uh, you know, handle on the back of the bus, second, third grade. Like now, what, do, what am I gonna do? Okay, well this is how they're getting down. I don't know what a condom is right now because I'm not in sex ed class. And so, yeah, you're going to see the spread of these kinds of things and not giving information even in, in those moments where you're going to maybe a doctor, you go, oh, this is not going to tell my mom. They're going to keep it. And maybe I don't feel comfortable telling my mom. Now to say like, yo, you can't get the proper education. You can't get the proper. And I, I mean, while I know this is mostly going to affect women, it still will affect guys as well, right? Um, cause there's a lot of stuff, there's just stuff that guys can carry and not even get any of the symptoms of. Mm -hmm. So now you're out here thinking you're super fine and you're, you know, killing off the world on conquest or whatever you want to call it at a time, however you're feeling about it, you know? Yeah. No, you're so right about that. I mean, in particular, when the whole third grade thing emerged for me with my daughter, it was really that very thing. It was the porn. And I was like mortified. I was like, what do you yeah. mean? They're talking about porn at school. What do you, what, what, what do you mean? Like, yeah. it was just so, because like for me, yeah. I mean, the extent to me seeing anything porn growing up was like my dad's Playboy magazine that he had in his briefcase mm -hmm. that was like, oops. There's a titty. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> you know, or, um, you know or like the times when there was like some race back in the day when, you know, HBO at late night had all the racy shit and, you know, you're like peeking out. Cinemax. This shit. Like, Cinemax, yeah. right? And you're like, Cinemax. And, Cinemax. and they're like, go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was yeah. the extent of porn. But to your point, you know, like just even in watching half of the shows, I try to like watch stuff with my kids to see like what it yeah. is. And I'm just like, yo, even the shit that's supposed to be G, things they were talking about PG, just the shit that's supposed to be G is cutesy, cutesy, like too cutesy. You know, everything's is a, is a boyfriend and a girlfriend dynamic. It could be a mystery show. And there's a boyfriend-girlfriend mm -hmm. dynamic and there's the kissy face stuff and mm -hmm. there's all this sexual innuendo. And I'm just like, how is this even G? So, I mean, to your point, it's it really is so in their face whereas like for us you had to be r and damn near nr really you know to see something super mm -hmm. egregious but if you were watching a g-rated movie or show back in the day you were assured that there was none of that i mean it was as pure and as corny as corny could be um but it's yeah. not the case anymore so it, it really has been an awakening for me really as a parent like porn third grade i was like oh god just take me now like i'm not gonna make it <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not gonna make it but you know we made it through third grade year and i had to reconfigure some shit and have some conversations but yeah if if you're a parent and you're not realizing just how accessible this stuff is you're you're at a, de a great deficit it's true yeah, you already lost if you haven't figured that out. If you haven't figured it out yet, because yeah. it's right there. It's, a, it's literally it's a everywhere. Google search away. Yeah, because I know that like people do the parental control stuff. So it's like, but your kid's friend's phone on the bus might not be parentally controlled, so you're still out the game. Mm -hmm. I just, I just wait till I go over to such and such his house. I just so -so wait until I'm at the mm -hmm. bus on the bus. You know what I mean? Uh, again, like nothing has really changed in that in that sp space. You know, before it was just VHS. It's like, oh, I'm gonna watch this movie, but I go over to Billy's house, <laughs> still gonna watch it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's still going, okay, his parents were in everything. You know what I mean? So, 
Um, man, renting VHS, I feel super old right now. Good grief. I ain't yeah, renting. When, okay. With, with um, the little special room in the back. Yeah. Listen, we had the garbage bag. There was like a garbage bag of like these forbidden VHSs that like my brother and I were never supposed to look at. And like we like just recently revealed that we had watched one from the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> my parents were like wait what <laughs> yeah. I'm like yeah we watched it was uh, Auntie Lee's meat pies and it was it's the like the most bizarre anything <laughs> if you could ever find it it's just the most bizarre thing I'm gonna google it Google. Now everybody's gonna be Google. Everybody's, everybody's gonna, gonna Google. Google. Well, advertise for free. You better get sponsored. You better get you some little skin skin mask sponsorship. Uh, right. You gonna come back with jelly? You. <laughs> my jelly hit me up. <laughs> but um, no, yeah, that, that was like that. And I mean, my brother and I look <laughs> like this. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not gonna be on that episode for sure. I can't have my name on that. <laughs> He's like, y'all finna fuck up my whole enterprise. My whole, yeah, my whole enterprise. He's like, y'all don't seem to understand that I am trying to make a way, whereas y'all have a way. I don't got, I don't got R. Kelly R. Kelly schemes. You know what I'm saying? I don't have these situations. I'm not ready. Whole different kind of security right there. Whole another kind of security happening right there. No, 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 with that. But no, I, I, so so it's really interesting. And I think the only reason I can know like the third grade and stuff is because I've had friends who have had kids early on. So like, you know, we're kicking at the house. I'm like, hey, Paul, blah, blah, blah. and then they start talking about school and Jill. It was like, yo, what? Can we learn how to multiply double digits first? Can we <laughs> like, like, oh my goodness. Yeah. It's, yeah, I thought it's unfathomable. It's, it's, it is extremely hard to keep, particularly if you have kids that are in, you know, some different age brackets where you want to kind of compartmentalize the experience. I know that's my experience. It's hard. So like I've, I've got like the 10 year old and I've got the six year old and the four year old. And it's, so there's like things that they could watch together but they're like they're all at different developmental stages and so like some of the stuff mm -hmm. i would not have a problem with my 10 year old watching it's like well how do you do that when they all want to watch tv together and then the six-year-old and the 10 year old are in the same room so they're 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 swapping stories because we hear them at night you me 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 you know so like that's happening that's right. and then that's the exactly. boy that's a good older sibling right there right <laughs> and so and then, you know and then the you know boy, what happened in that movie mom wouldn't let you watch it was a <laughs> it was a kitty exactly <laughs> word and you know and then the boy he's just like he's on he's another level he's he's basically like the six-year-old at four and yeah. so I'm like, but no, you're the baby. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. no, go watch Paw Patrol. <laughs> like, so you it's just so it's, hard. Out of it's really He's hard. Up on game for real. For real, too old. Yeah. old. He gonna have it all. Yeah, he's, a, he's winning. Well, like, he gonna know how to make. If he knows yeah. how to do hair. And he understands and respects the hair regimen game. He does, and the natural one at that. It, oh, that's how you win, right there. Be like, oh man, that sh is crazy, right? No, he really appreciates it. So he's he is four, and he's already macking in in preschool, like already. Appropriate. No, like yeah. really and truly has like two girls that like have to give him hugs before they go home, and like they're all googly eyed, like, hey Bryce, hi, I love you, Bryce. Bryce, ah, oh, win, super win. I was, and I was not prepared for that either. I'm like, okay, first grade, maybe kindergarten, pre-K, and like, it's like literally Thanksgiving, and they're going around in a circle, and they're like, so I don't, I won't say the little girl's name, but they're just like, oh, you know, who do you love? And she's like, 
I love rice. I was like, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can't. Already? Already? No, we not. Listen, it's it, my cousin and I, we're like two months apart. And um, we have, we're on the tail end. Like, my family is big. Like I said, my dad's from like a family of 14. So our older cousins have kids. And so um, one of our, I guess, next generation cousins, he's like five. There's, there are a couple of them, and they're like five. So my cousin calls me. He's like, his name's Brandon. He's like, Paul's, he's like, Paul, you know what this little kid is doing right now? He got his gifts, and he got on his iPad to call our other little cousin on her iPad. And they're like four and five. And they are doing a show and tell of their gifts to each other and opening it and doing like their own little special FaceTime unboxing. And he was like, mm -hmm. they're like, what? And they're like, oh yeah, I got this truck, look. And then they're like, oh, okay, do you play this game? Did you get to the next level yet? And blah, 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 blah. I was just like, own phones, yeah. own iPads, own us. Like, what part of the game is this? <laughs> For real? How? Right. Yeah. They only my, eat um, vegan. My best they only eat son. organic vegan food because their parents are like, "Oh, we're gonna put." You. So they only eat organic vegan food, and when their parents eat anything that's like a little chicken, right? They're like. You're going to die. That's not good for you. You're killing your body. Yeah, it's just like, yo. So, yeah. Uh, salute to y'all with the little ones. I, I don't know, man. There's a lot going on over there. But kids are so in, er, indoctrinated early to technology nowadays. Yeah. You know, and part of it, like, I think about, I wrote letters to my cousins who lived far away. Like, legit, oh. I needed a stamp. Mm -hmm. I had stationery. Like, I wrote letters. We didn't have emails until we were college, pretty much. So yeah, we wrote letters. So now, I mean, it's I'm great. I feel really young right now. Right? <laughs> no, it's, yes, it's I true though. Stationaries. I mean, email yeah, was- so now I to see my kids be now. able to do that. Yeah. yeah. But so to see my kids you. be able to FaceTime with their cousins is cool. But yeah, I also, you know, I have a three-year-old nephew and he FaceTimes me in the morning like, hey. And I'm like, yeah. what? Like, how do you even? But he's got an old iPhone. He just, yeah. and it's connected to the Wi-Fi. He opens it up, clicks my face. There I, hey, what you doing? And yeah. we just having a conversation in the morning. It's great. Right. So right. there are there are benefits to it. But, yeah. as, you know, but then you see the kids, they mature. They seem to mature faster. And I don't know if that's good or bad yet, I think, to be determined. I don't know that it's maturing faster as it is exposed faster because I feel like previous generations matured faster because like society respected them as adults and stuff like you leave high school and you'd be like you should be getting married now, so I'm now. Like, right, they were wrong. right but I feel like now we have access to a whole bunch of information but at the same time everyone's trying to allow you to preserve your innocence because you have so much information so early on so then you end up at like 25, 26, and you still feel like a little kid. And then not to mention loans, all the other kind of stuff. So I don't know. I, I would argue they're more exposed, but I don't know if they're more mature. Because I don't know that I feel more mature, and I came up right with it. Like, I think I posted something on Instagram <laughs> the other The internet just turned 30 uh, two days ago, I think, or yesterday. Mm -hmm. The World Wide Web, it my birthday, I won't be 30 until December. Like, so it's like, really? So you, you're younger than the internet? I, I'm younger than the internet. You, somebody, somebody, uh, yeah, I'm younger than the internet. And I didn't, I was like, man, I thought I was really old. Like, I was like, oh, I clearly am older than you. It is what it is. Wow. Never wrote a letter to her. You ain't never had a pen pal, have you? No. Um, I've had forced pen pals. I didn't like to write. So that was a thing. I wasn't a fan of writing like letters and stuff. That wasn't my my particular way of I might journal, but I didn't wanna write to you. I'd just be like, Well, I'll call you or see you at some point. Yeah, we ain't have um we have a choice. So. Well, I, I mean, I didn't have yeah, a choice. Yeah. You had it was kind of part of the curriculum at a certain point that you had to have a pen pal. Yeah, well, we wait, had, no, yeah, fourth, I, I fourth had, grade. I I had that yeah, 
I've had a forced pen pal at one point. We had to write to some people, but it never stayed very long. Or we like write a letter to a prisoner or something like that. One of those programs. Um, that always used to freak me out because I was like, what did they get out of car trying to find? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't like this one. Though. Hilarious. Um, but I, I mean, early on, I think more of my stuff, I came up more in the, like the AIM state phase and MySpace and stuff. So it was a lot more wall post and message sending of that for if I was trying to keep in contact and then text messaging. Because, like, prepaid phones started to really pop. The next tell with the chirp and the boost mobile, all that kind of stuff. Whoa, about the wow. chirp, chirp, chirp. Little yeah. sidekick. The sidekick. You know, like, I started texting maybe in the last, I don't know, eight years or less. Something mm-hmm. like that. I mean, because I remember, I mean, when I had the flip phone, I think I might've sent like one or two, but it definitely wasn't that big then. And then I remember getting like the first droid and I still wasn't down with it. I was like text messaging. Yeah, I'm good. I'm just trying to get good with the functionality of this shit. Um, And yeah, so it's pretty recent. I think like just within the last few years that I've really gotten into the whole text thing. And, And like, to your point, Sarah, like, Email was there, like, so I had an email probably since, I don't know, maybe the end of high school, but nobody was using it. I don't think I started using email fitfully until the end of college when I was going for jobs. And then certainly once I had like my first full job out, but I mean, shoot, I was still typing on three and a half inch floppy disks in college. I remember seeing somebody in the. In How the old computer. are you? We have to have an offline discussion. <laughs> oh, no, no, I thought I had an idea. I, rem- I, I literally, literally remember. Who we got to we got to talk about some years and dates <laughs> after we get off here. I, <laughs> I mean, I remember. <laughs> I remember. We suddenly became we became beta maxes out this year. Apparently, I, I guess so. Like, oh. I just dated myself big time, you know. But like seriously, I was all of my all of my papers are on three and a half inch floppy disk. Same. I remember yeah, same. being in the computer lab and hearing somebody talk about uh, USB, and I was like, "Ooh, what? Uh, no zip drive? Excuse Man, me, listen. zip drive." And I was yeah. like, "You know what? I, I remember like, what is those that? I do remember that." I was like, "What? What is that?" And I remember going to the bookstore and pricing it out to see what the zip drive thing was. And Five it was, million yo, dollars. It was like a gazillion it was so dollars. Fucking and I was expensive. like, "Guess what? I'm sticking with my three and a half inch disc. I'm it was good. Like, this is like eighty-eight floppies in one, and Word. it's only and one twenty. And it was like eighty-eight. Yeah, that shit was I a million that. dollars. It was a so lot of money. Way. And I was like, nah, I think I'm gonna just chill with my six dollar, get ten three and a half inch <laughs> floppy disc. And I had the neon jump offs too, the neon colored jump offs. So I was chilling. Yeah. So we were when I got to college, we were phasing off with the <laughs> three and a half floppies. I had some three and a half floppies for school because I did correspondence for a few years because I was homeschooled. So you have to like send in a three and a half floppy with your with your printed work or whatever. When I got to college it was more of like the CDs. So everything was mostly CD drives. And so you would save your files on there and turn your presentation in with a case. And the, like, and, um, and by the end of like, maybe by like sophomore year of college, it was just more of the flash drive, but you still had a lot of, a lot of, it was really CDs. And I think the, I think the drive just really disappeared maybe like what, seven years ago, eight yeah. years ago, like, uh, yeah, I just remember when they first came out, how expensive I they remember. were. I remember. My dad was excited about it. God. That's the only reason so I know. I, but I was, I was, I don't even think I was in junior high yet when that started to really pop. Maybe I was on. Yeah. And but I didn't have a real concept of money then. So it was like, oh, the smaller thing, just get the smaller one. That seems cool. Right. <laughs> yeah. No. My bank See, I, was working, I was working for my own coins at that point and that was the, the point in time in my, my college career that, you know, any support had stopped coming my way. So 
I was like, yeah, we're not going to spend Man. money on that. That's like nails, and that's a dinner out, and that's a new outfit. You were paying for dinners out? Like, oh, what? Yeah. I was like, no, Man. we're not doing that. But so you're you're like semi old, but not old, Paul. Like you're kind well, of so kind of there. Here's what it is. My, my parents are older, so <laughs> I was raised like I was older, but I'm not. So I, I think that I think that it's parenting style that makes kind of puts your person out that nurture type thing. And I think my parents are from the school of parents that ended up producing more at Gen Xers. And so I got like Gen X style parenting. And so like I mix it because I actually was around millennials all the time. So it's yeah. But yeah. There's always something different going on in that nurture aspect when I vibe with somebody of your age group, I find, because it doesn't happen often, um, not yeah. because I'm not open to it, but just because there doesn't, it's a different thought it, it, it doesn't tend to be a whole lot for me to mm -hmm. discuss there. But when it does happen, and it's happened with you and, and also... Um, Kimberly, who interned with me, I was like, like when I first met her, I was like, oh, she's young. But then I'm like, but there's something so very mature and different about her. And then she, we yeah. end up talking and she's like, oh, yeah, my parents are from the West Indies. And I'm like, there it is. Oh, true. Ooh, there you go. Also true. Also <laughs> you know? true. It's a whole different game as well. It's that a whole nother great. ball game. So. It's a yeah. different kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Interesting, interesting. Well, good chat, chaps. What do you have going on? I am heading to work, human, on Sunday. It's here. Let's go. It we here. out here. Let's go. We out here. And we're about to eat barbecue. We're about to have all kinds of dope stuff. All kinds of dope stuff. Only sweet barbecue, though. And my podcast drops on Tuesday. So the it will be officially launching. The Leading in Color podcast. I'm very excited for y'all to hear what I have cooked up so far. So you'll be on my vlog when you me. come down here. You know I'm vlogging now. You are? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, I guess it's not anymore. Hey guys, I'm vlogging. No. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot this is like a stream thing, right? It's a, it's a whole <laughs> show, a, a whole actual show. That's right. Gonna end up on YouTube shortly. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> my bad yeah um, i've been doing more content stuff <laughs> i got all my little accoutrement i've been out here with the camera gang and the sticks and the oh, lighting and the he got gadgets you know i'm out here living living a different kind of life right now <laughs> um no uh I, i've been trying to do more uh content creation as i talked with you guys about uh offline so that's really what I'm working on. Uh, just making sure that I put out more on my uh, podcast and YouTube channel for my business, and then you know, uh, working with some clients. So that's that's about it. I can't think of anything super special. Uh, I have a client who's putting out some Captain Marvel wear uh, this week, so that would be kind of cool. Ooh, fun. You know, I don't know. If that's. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, super geeked it. with the Marvel this year. Like I, I have, I'm like strategically planning my movie going. I have to see Car Captain Marvel. I've got to do Dark Phoenix when that happens. And then I just saw the trailer for Endgame, which Endgame, I'm, yep. I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. I'm excited and I can't wait. Indeed. What is going on with me? I am <clears throat> in the midst of a lot of... Um, media interviews so i'll have some interview once i get back from espana of course um espana. espana espana um yeah just a lot of interviews i recorded a podcast today i'm recording another one on sunday so a lot of pr going on right now because i started kind of diving off of that last year and i'm like okay it's time to pick that up again so that along with client work and like i said fitfully we are not here next week we'll be back the week after next because i shall not what are we be talking present. about um that's a good question 
Wait, so we're not going to talk to you while you're in Spain? No. Wow. She already there was said a that. She before she that. said, oh, strong no. No. Okay, offline conversation. Like strong <laughs> screen. She's Clearly like strong offline screen. conversation. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get to the strong streams in uh-huh. Spain. I'm trying to get to the strong streams in Spain. That's what's Apparently. Happening. Apparently. And tapas and all sorts of other things. You know, look, this hey. is a, it, it's in the realm of work-life balance. There was a time... And you know this, Paul, because you've been rocking with me from the beginning, that I used to do this from any city I was in. Like, I I would be leery die. I I, like a hallway in a convention center once, and I was like, she's so committed to the game. Literally. (laughs) Um, And I, and and, you know, and I still will, but I I gotta, you know, there's gotta be time when I just, like, dial it back and not do that and just see. Man, listen. Y'all on me, and I'm going to go live next week, and, and we're going to have a whole super dope meal perspective on something. <laughs> go ahead. Do you, boo. <laughs> yeah. How long are you out here till, uh, till Sarah? Are you here till? From Sunday to Thursday. Yeah, so. we're going to do one. We're going to do an AI one, and we're going to say crazy stuff about Janine while she's not watching I allowed. I, I did. I, I entrusted my show to you once before. You did right by me, so I will trust that you. Oh, that. I did. I forgot about that. that. Yeah. that was a joke too. Oh my goodness! I when you put me on the spot, I was like, oh, I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. I just I used to troll so much on Twitter. I don't know why we're friends. <laughs> I don't know. I I really don't. I don't know why I continue to like you, Sagittarius. People. Y'all play too much. Facts. I'll give you that. That's for, that's for sure. Nice. But yeah, no, have fun. Have fun. Thanks. So, um, yeah. what are we talking when you come back? Um, she said, I'll, she don't know. I, I don't know. I didn't hear her say that. It's, I'm it's, sorry. Been, it's been a long day, and I know I, I have a topic, and it's okay. there and it's published, but my brain is so oversaturated right now that I don't know. All right. I'm just here. Or oh, as yeah. you say, we here. We here. We out here. Why? We out here. <laughs> well, <Gotcha. laughs> thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you in two weeks, episode eleven. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>